and welcome to Christ Church of Fort Thomas, Kentucky. My name is Edward Good, and I'm pastor here. We are a congregation partnered and covenanted with the United Church of Christ, and our guiding statement is that we embrace all as we journey the way of Jesus. So wherever you are in your life journey or your faith journey, we are grateful you are with us, and we pray that God speaks into your life in a really beautiful, powerful way. We are one week away from the beginning of the season of Advent, leading up to the celebration of Christmas. I know, it's like almost here. Uh, but uh, we at Christ Church, we will be having uh, our normal Advent services through the weeks. Um, we will also be having a service at some point, the date we're still finalizing, there will be a service of uh, remembrance, uh, kind of a blue Christmas type of service um, of, uh, for those folks who this season is a harder time than some others. Um, and so uh, we'll share about that. Um, but uh, we'll be uh, going through uh, a series that we're going to be centering on. on uh, the theme is um, from the manger and the, what springs out of the manger of hope and peace and love and joy um, through this season ahead. And so we will be having these services through the season as well. And so if you are not able to be here in person, we'll have an opportunity to share that here as well. But next Sunday, you'll see behind me, things will look a little bit different as the, uh, the, the sanctuary will be decorated for, uh, for, Christmas, or for Advent and for Christmas. So wherever you are in your life journey, your faith journey, again, we welcome you. We're grateful you're with us. And um, we're excited to uh, share this time as we are going to center today on the idea of gratitude. And so uh, we'll be doing that as we hear two scripture readings from the book of Psalms, and then we jump into our message. Again, welcome. We're glad you're here. So we have two scripture readings that we're going to look at today. Uh, again, both from the book of Psalms, and um, they're going to be very different. Uh, types of psalms and songs that you're going to hear in this. Um, so one is Psalm 100, and then the other is Psalm 130. But before we read them, let us pray. Lord, may your Holy Spirit take these ancient songs and let them be our songs. May we find ourselves in them, and may we find ourselves in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So first, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into the Lord's presence with singing and know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us. We are God's. We are God's people. We are the sheep of God's pasture. We enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving and in God's courts with praise. We give thanks and we bless God's name. For the Lord is good. And the Lord's steadfast love endures forever and God's faithfulness to all generations. Mm, good stuff. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Hear my voice. Let your vo ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in the Lord's hope, in the Lord's word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. And there is great power to redeem. It is the Lord who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Both of these are the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. And I don't know what your practice is going to be or who you'll be spending Thanksgiving with. And I don't know if maybe you've, not, you've had the same kind of experience um, at a preceding Thanksgiving meal, or maybe this is what you'll do coming up. Have you ever done the thing where you're, you're around the table, there's a big group of people gathered, and maybe you join hands, and before you eat the meal, everybody has to go around and share something for which they're grateful. You ever done that? I'll be honest, 
I am not a big fan of that for a couple of reasons. One is I remember when I was a kid, uh, when we would go to a larger Thanksgiving, we didn't do that every year. Sometimes it was just the four of us. But sometimes we'd go to a larger gathering of people. And I remember times, maybe I was like 10 years old or something like that, and I'm smelling all that good food, the turkey and especially the gravy, and I'm smelling that and I'm hungry and I'm ready to dig in. And we're all standing there around there and you know, someone's going around. And it always would get to somebody who would feel like it wasn't just sharing one gratitude or one sentence. It was like they were going to kind of do a little bit of a speech. And I remember as a kid thinking, like, dude, be quiet. Right? That honestly wasn't the words that were in my mind. But, you know, like, come on, like, we got to eat this meal. And then it would finally come to me and I'd like blurt out as quickly as I could, I'm thankful for turkey, you know, and hope that the next people would be fast as well, right? So I didn't have a great experience of that as a kid and it still sort of colors some things for me still today. But there's also another side of it, which is that when we do that kind of practice, to me, again, this is me speaking for me, it gives a sense that gratitude is just sort of like a performative thing. Like it's this thing that we're going to do with everybody because it's kind of that's what you're supposed to do on Thanksgiving Day. And so gratitude is this moment that is just this one time a year type of thing. But that's not living a life of gratitude. And in fact, when we look at the witness of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation, there is a common thread through all the books of elements of gratitude. Now, that doesn't mean everything in the Bible is about gratitude. There are some that is definitely not. But there is a consistent line that goes from Genesis to Revelation that speaks of the practice and the living of life in a grateful sort of way. And you see it in a variety of different ways. So you see it in, um, like in the Hebrew scriptures, where you have you know, Leviticus and, and, and Deuteronomy and so forth, the giving of all the laws of the people. Right? And some of them are ones we read today and we're like, that makes no sense to me, I don't get it. And th yeah, that's a reality. But there's also something you can kind of read between the lines is it's talking about uh, like sacrifices that people were called to make. One of the sacrifices that was called to be made by the people, not just once a year, but like on an ongoing basis, were sacrifices and offerings of gratitude for what God had done in the past, what God was doing in that moment as well. And so it wasn't just a, a performative one time a year, it was this sense that all the time, from beginning of the year to the end, we are going to be people recognizing gratitude for what is going on in our lives and in the world. And so in addition to that, there's also many examples of people being grateful to one another for what they have done. One of the best examples of that you see in the letters of Paul in the New Testament. Most of Paul's letters begin with some element of gratitude of Paul's relationship with the people in that congregation or that person to which he's writing. And also most of them end with a litany of gratitudes. Thanks to this person or these folks for what they're doing for the work of the kingdom or what they've done in my life or how important they are to me. There's this sense that Paul has of this outpouring of gratitude that he offers. And there's teachings around gratitude. Paul especially has several places in his letters where he lifts up how we live ways of gratitude day by day. And there are also songs of gratitude. So in the book of Exodus, after the Hebrew people have left Egypt, they've crossed the sea, they're beginning their journey in the wilderness, there is a song by Moses' sister Miriam of gratitude, a song that is still sung today by the Jewish people. There's a song of Moses there in that same place. You go further on into the Hebrew scriptures and you come to the story of a woman named Hannah who was initially was unable to have children. And when she finally has her firstborn son, there is a song of Hannah that is a song of gratitude. You go forward into the New Testament and the stories of Jesus, and in the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, you have story after story where there's songs of gratitude. You have Mary's song and Elizabeth's song and Zechariah's song. And then when he sees this child Jesus for the first time, a man named Simeon lifts up a song of gratitude. 
And then, of course, you have the book of Psalms, which itself is a book of songs, 150 of them. And I think you can say pretty safely that virtually every psalm is in some way a song of gratitude. Not all of them. There's a couple that aren't. But virtually all of them, in some way, are songs of gratitude. So let's explore what we see in the Psalms. And we have two of them that we already heard today, Psalm 100 and Psalm 130. And so let's talk about the first one, Psalm 100. Right? That is an absolutely beautiful psalm of praise and thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise. Sing to the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with, think, with, with singing. God made us. We are God's. God is our shepherd. We come with thanksgiving and praise, and we bless God's name because God's steadfast love endures forever. It is beautiful, right? And, and it's beautiful just in the words, but it's intended to be a song that is sung. And so I want to play just a, a quick clip here of a rendition of it, a modern rendition of it by a folk a uh, duo named that uh, it's a husband and wife, and they call themselves Poor Bishop Hooper is the name of the band, and they did or, or, or duo, and they did this project that they put out to the world for free of putting every song to music, every psalm to music, and here's what they did for Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thankfulness. Come to his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Know that the Lord is God. Now, that song, that song is not like the, you know, knock your socks off, like, you know, huge sound or anything like that. But what I love about it is just the warmth of it, comfort of it, the hope in it that is just pouring out of like, yes, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, right? At least that's my experience of that song. But this isn't the only song that's like that. Right? There's a ton of others. For example, Psalm, 130, or Psalm 34, I will extol the Lord at all times. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 111, great are the works of the Lord. Glorious and majestic are God's deeds. Psalm 95, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Psalm 103, praise the Lord, O my soul. Let everything within me praise God's holy name. Psalm 150 is this psalm that you can kind of sum it up by saying, Praise God everywhere and with everything. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Right? There are all these psalms that are just these overflowing songs of gratitude and praise. And there are times in our lives that those are the songs we sing, whether we're using those words or not. But the gratitudes that we have are those ones where things are going great. We feel like we're seeing God's hand at work. We're receiving some kind of blessing that is just lifting our hearts. Something wonderful has taken place. You know, that, that you can just kind of keep checking off the list of, ah, that's great, and that's doing well, and this is wonderful. Yeah, we've, at least I've had moments like that in my life. I hope you have had some of those as well, where this is the kind of psalm, kind of song, the kind of gratitude that would emerge from that. And I'll be honest, there's even a discipline to remember to be grateful in those times. Because it is really easy to kind of pat ourselves on our back for, yeah, we got ourselves to this place. But no, in those times it's God that's been working at in there as well, right? And recognizing the gratitude that we have to God, to others, to the world for what has taken place. And so there's that element of gratitude. But there's also another side. And that's where that other psalm came in. Psalm 130. You know, it starts out, out of the depths I cry to you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting. Nothing's happening. I'm waiting. Right? That's the sense of that psalm. And there's many, many others like that. Psalm 130. 
starts out, you know, there is the out of the depths we just did, Psalm 6, that goes through a weariness that the writer of that psalm has, that there's terror surrounding. Psalm 10, God, why do you stand far off? That's a direct quote from it. Why do you hide yourself in the face of trouble? Psalm 43, vindicate me, God. Defend my cause against an ungodly people. Why have you cast me off is a question that's asked in that psalm. Why are you, ca and why are you cast down, soul of mine? Right? That you've got these psalms, and again, many others like it. And it's these kind of psalms that some people read the psalms and go, oh my gosh, these are terrible. Right? Because they're, they're rough to read. But sometimes they're expressing those, re those real moments that we have in life. And that's what I love about having those songs as well. But here's the thing. The vast majority of those songs have another piece to it. They have another piece to it. So Psalm 130, in the midst of this, you know, out of the depths I cry to you, it says, with the Lord there's steadfast love. With the Lord there's great power to redeem. There is forgiveness with you. That's there in that same psalm. Psalm 6 that talked about the weariness and the terrors. It says, the Lord, you've heard my prayer and you accept my supplication. Psalm 10 of asking God, why are you standing far off? It says at the end, but the Lord is king forever and ever. And God, you hear the desires of the meek. Psalm 43, God, vindicate me. Why do you cast me off? Then ends with this. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For again, I will praise him, my help and my God. Virtually every one of these types of psalms has that kind of tag. There are a few that do not, but most of them do. And what I hear in that is this real sense of holding those two things together. That it isn't that the writer of that psalm is getting to the end and saying, okay, yeah, God, I said, why'd you cast me off? But really, it's all good. I got it. You've got it. We're all good. No. I think it's that you're holding them together. That I'm scared. I'm despairing. I'm struggling. And yet I trust. And that's the other aspect of gratitude is how do we hold it in those times as well? In my own life, you've heard me share many times, I think, about the gratitude journal that I keep. I've been keeping a gratitude journal. I use a, an app on my phone called Day One to do it. And I've been keeping it for years. But I had a, a surprising recognition just a few weeks ago as I was writing about gratitude in my book that I'm working on. I realized that I had been thinking that from about 11 years ago, from November of 2013 until now, that I had written gratitudes in there virtually every single day. But I realized that I actually hadn't. You see, in November of 2013, I had just come back from this really transformative event in my life, and one of the encouragements in there was to begin a gratitude journal. There were some challenging things going on in my own health and the in, in, in the congregation I was serving and in my family at that time. And that was one of the encouragements, keep a gratitude journal in the midst of it. And so I did for about two months, almost every single day, I lifted up several things for which I was grateful. But then it started to kind of tail off. Some, day, some weeks it was like once or twice, then maybe it'd be like two or three weeks and then there'd be an entry and then maybe it was a month and then there'd be a couple more. And that's kind of how it went for the next four years until December 3rd. 2017. And from December 3rd to 2017 until today, I have lifted up gratitudes every single day. Now, I don't share that of like, look at me, how great I am. That's not it. But what I can say is that I saw in my own life the power of what holding those gratitudes, having that intentionality about gratitude to go alongside other things in life. Because on December 3rd, 2017, I also wrote in my journal a recognition 
that I was most likely sometime in the coming months going to have to leave the church that I'd been serving for the preceding nine years. And there was a lot of anger, there was a lot of hurt, and there was a lot of fear. Because in leaving, I would be jumping into the unknown of not knowing what was going to be next. And it would be really easy in that time to spiral down into despair and doubt and fear. And those things were there. Not lying. Those were there. But something on that December 3rd, 2017, got me to start writing gratitudes again. I don't know if it was my wife, Amy, who said, yeah, why don't you start that again? Or my spiritual director, or whether it just sort of bubbled up for me. The spirit spoke and was like, yeah, get back to this. I don't know. But I do know from December 3rd, 2017 to now, every single day, at least three things that I've written. Things that I'm grateful for. And you think about 2017 to now. All that's happened in those times. I mean, I can list off all kinds of things in my own life, but there's a lot that's gone on in the world and the things that are part of our common life from COVID and na uh, national challenges and world events and all kinds of stuff. And yet, every day. And I think it's helped to keep me balanced. Just as you see in the Psalms. To lift up the gratitudes when things are wonderful and amazing and to lift up the gratitude, yes, in the midst of the trials and holding that alongside. And in fact, over about the last two years, what I've been writing each day is, has shifted a little bit. There's actually two sections I write every single day. One is a series of things that I list as awe, like A-W-E, those are my gratitudes, and also the aches. What are the things that are stirring in me that are challenging or the people I'm praying for, whether it's within the life of the congregation or people beyond the congregation that I'm praying for. And those are there together every day. That there's gratitude, there's awe, and there's struggle, there's ache. And they hold together and balance each other. And so as we move into this season of gratitude, right? This one time a year focus on gratitude. Let's try to shift it. How do we practice this day by day? That these are the lenses through which we live our lives. That these are acts almost in a sense of resistance against a world that tells us to be afraid, to be scared, to be despairing. It says, no, we all also will be people of gratitude as they hold together the awe and the ache. Grace, peace, love, and joy be with you today and every day. Amen. Before we close, I do want to offer one more thing for today. One of the things that we did not get to do while I was on my sabbatical time was to do our normal practice around All Saints Day, to remember those in our congregation, our community of faith, who have died over the last year. And on this day, as we're talking about gratitude and, yes, that balance, yes, we grieve the losses of these dear people. But we also give thanks for their lives and all they meant to the, their loved ones, that they meant to this church and what they've done in the world. And so we're going to be offering this time now as we go through those, and there will be a time at the end if you want to offer up someone else in your life. In thanksgiving, but also in holding your own grief. And so we offer them now, today.